Hello, beautiful human. I am Zach. That is Dan. We welcome to the studio for the first time ever, Noah Beth. Finally. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you. You say finally, but I do, like, I feel like I almost scared you at Harry Styles. You've gone to Harry Styles so many times. I have. We ran into each other uh, one of the times. We did. And I was like, I feel like you're avoiding our show. We really want you on the show. And I feel like I was like, I was a little crazed. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I think, I don't know. I've been a fan of the show for a, for a while now. No, and you lie. I swear. And I don't know. I felt like, I mean, you can ask, even ask my manager. I'm very, I'm very like, I feel like I don't deserve a lot of things. And I know it's like early to get on into this, like talking like this. But I feel like I was like, I haven't done anything to like go on his show. Like you have some pretty, pretty cool names on the show. And I was like, I haven't done anything yet. So like, what do I even talk about? So well, here we are. Here's the deal. You have the most to discuss. And I, when I first met you at Coachella, like not this last one, but the one before it. Yeah. I really was so fascinated in who you were because what makes you, you is different than any other influencer I've ever seen. Like you really could right now, you, you could have been a professional athlete. You have this real intense, like focus on routine that do you apply that routine to anything you do online? You have to. Uh, I definitely think it's translated over in a, I don't know. I feel like growing up, I was just always very, that's all I ever knew was routine and like structure. And I feel it's definitely translated over into this because at first it wasn't. And at first I didn't have that kind of like structure in my life. And I enjoyed the freedom for a bit, but then it got to a point where, I don't know. I just, I like told everyone on my team, I was like, can we get this schedule? Can we get like a calendar of like, I want to wake up and look at my day because There'd be days where I wake up and I didn't know what I was doing, and I don't. I don't like that. And that's frightening. Be it's frightening because you gave up so much to do this. Yeah, and that's something that I, I, I start to understand the magnitude of when I first met you, and y you go to things sober. So like, whenever I've seen yeah. you out, you're of the most clear mind. Yeah, and you you tend to be dealing with I don't know dramatic friends from time to time, yeah. or <laughs> but you sort through everything because you're incredibly sober and you you're you're a joy to talk to. Thank you. Really a treat. So. You gave up what could have been a fucking massive athletic career because you dedicated your life to soccer. Yeah. So when you f feel like your days aren't filled enough, there has to be a part of you that goes like, fuck, like I could have been living a whole different life in this very moment. Yeah. No, there's definitely that, that question of like, what if, um, constantly. And I feel when this all kind of start f first started to kind of play out for me, I, uh, I don't know. There was just always that question of like, what if I never posted that first video? Or what if I, you know, what if COVID never happened? You know, all these questions. Um, because my life would be very different than it is now. And I think, uh, I don't know. I feel like, but that's life. And I feel like things happen for a reason. And I feel like now it's just kind of like my job. And I feel like I owe it to myself to just do what I can with what, I, what I'm working with right now. So I'm just trying to have fun with it. That video was a delayed virality. Like, you posted it, and it didn't pop initially. Which one are we talking about? Your first video ever on TikTok that changes your life. Yeah. Because then it's like weeks or months later, right? Then it pops off. Well, the video itself did well overnight, but not to the to the point where I, I think people go back to it now of like, oh, like, they look up Noah Beck's first ever TikTok because, I don't know, I just feel like it's an easy video to find, but... I, over overnight, the video did pretty well for me, which, which, from zero from zero followers. Because the whole story is kind of crazy about like my long story short. Um, you can be long story long. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I had I, like I'm the baby of two sisters, so of three kids. And your sister gets into it. She, my sister gets into it. And you're it. competitive as fuck. Yeah, and just the annoying younger brother. And I was like. I could, you know, I could definitely get more followers than you. Cause at the time she had like 8,000 followers. And when I got sent home from college to go home, it was like, everyone was home from, everyone was home from wherever we were. They were in college. I was in college and like, it was heaven for my mom. Cause all the, all the birds were back in the nest. And so she loved it. And uh, to be fair, I loved it. I had a great time, uh, like at home. Um, but I would always see my sister like making videos and like, she would somehow sometimes have like friends over and I'd be like, what are you guys doing? And like, it's TikTok. And I was like, 
yeah, I know what TikTok is, but like, d- do any of you guys have accounts? And t- Tatum showed me hers, and she had like eight thousand followers at the time, and I was like, I don't know, eight thousand people, that's a lot. And I was like, good for you. And she just like made like videos with like her college friends, and then I was like, I bet in two weeks I can have more followers than you. Just like one night, I think her friends were over, and I was like trying to impress them or whatever. And then um, I I made a video that night. I made two, and then I posted them. And the next day, I woke up to like twenty thousand followers. Wow! So that was nuts, but not quite the virality of like some of the videos later on, but still enough to go from zero to twenty thousand because people were just like, you know, who's this? Like that kind of thing. Do you know why those videos popped instantly? I just think it was timing. I, I really think that I joined the app at such a perfect time unintentionally yeah. because I don't know. I just joined at a time when no one had anything else to do. Like people were taking on hobbies because of COVID. Like people were just bored and on their phone and just scrolling and scrolling. And then I don't know, like I wish I had an explanation for you because I wonder it to this day. Like why do you think being pretty has something to do with it? Okay. So I think I'm, I'm a very self-aware guy. I like to think like I like to, and I, I definitely think there are better looking guys than me out there that post videos similar to me. And I'm like, this guy deserves more followers than he does. Or so, yeah, there's that, that question of like, why? But maybe that has something to do with it. Thank you. <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like you've been given a platform and you try to make the most with it. Yeah, 100%. So it doesn't start and end just based on appearance and aesthetic. Mm-mm, it can't. There's, n- there's no longevity in that. And so that's why I've tried to expand from just showing that side, that side being, being pretty or whatever. But I, I just, I try to show my personality and well, that's really all, that's really what it was. Like, I don't know why those first videos did well, but I, I feel like I have an understanding of why people kind of like stuck and like came with me along the ride because Mm -hmm. I was posting everything like I was just posting like I didn't trap myself in a box I didn't have a niche and I I still don't to this day I try to just do everything and so I feel like that's part of what intrigues people is that you really don't I don't know what I'm doing next week you know (laughs) it's like the the question of like oh what's Noah's what's he doing next you You travel like crazy travel like crazy you're everywhere and anywhere Mm -hmm. but you're also taking on new challenges like I didn't know you had a movie coming I do yeah 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 I mean, Definitely a new challenge. I, I can only imagine. Yeah. And you're producing it. I am. The QB bad boy and me. And me. <laughs> how does how does that yeah. even cross your plate? Um, I don't know. I think I expressed my interest when I first moved out to LA. Uh, when I kind of, it was after the, the freedom of the schedule kind of, and when I first like made the move over and like really like settled in here, after the freedom of the you know loose schedule kind of wore off on me i was like all right where's the longevity in this like how do i make this last because tiktok can crash tomorrow and i'm like i'm jobless so i don't know i I think i just expressed to my team i was like well while we're out here and while we're doing this you know if i'm really gonna dive into this i've always had a thing for like i've always loved movies but growing up in phoenix arizona i'd didn't even know like what were the first steps to like it was it was just never in my head I'm gonna be a movie star you know like that just never crossed my mind um but then when I first came out here you know like you wake up you look outside and you see the Hollywood sign it's like oh all these all these ideas start to come to you and it's like the classic movie thing and then I don't know I just told my team I was like would it be possible it seems like I'm pretty good on this little screen can I get on like a big screen like that'd be cool I think that's something that I would love to try. And they were like, yeah, let's get you, let's get you an acting agent. Let's get you some auditions. Let's get you all this. And so we kind of just started doing that. And I've been in acting classes now for like two years. Holy shit. Yeah. So I'm excited for this. Thank you. But see, this is what I'm talking about. Like, that's like a very, like, that's an athlete's mindset. Yeah. Because a lot of people start that shit and they don't keep it. Yeah. And it's not like you're not busy. You have a bunch of other things going on. Yeah. It's really cool. What yeah, was your experience you. like on set? Were you comfortable or was it kind of like... I haven't filmed it yet. Oh, you haven't? No. No, no. Oh. So I, I start filming... I'm supposed to start filming in like a, mo- a month, less than a month. 
And it's been that's exciting, very exciting. But I know I know the script like the back of my hand now because it's been pushed. We were supposed to start filming like March this time last year. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. So it's been pushed due to you know all things Hollywood. You know, it's just. But now there's the the writer strike going on, so uh, it could be pushed again. But that being said, I'm I, I'm ready for it whenever. That and that's what really matters. Yeah, as long as you do the preparation, it's just like you just wait for your call. So you really uh, had to have been the hardest decision you ever made, not moving forward with being a D1 athlete. Easily, yeah, when, for sure. When Zach said earlier, he mentioned you could be a professional athlete. Like as soon as he said that, you had this look on your face, like it's the, yeah, it's the one that well, got away. That's not thing, a though. joke, though. No, but that's the thing. Like I don't want to seem like that, like uncle at the barbecue when he's older and be like, "Oh, back in my prime, like back in my heyday, you know, I could sling it." It's like I don't want to sit here and say that and have people just be like, All right, "Like okay, like," but so that's why it's it, there's even more of like a. It almost, I don't know, like being as competitive as I am and just being like how I am with life, just kind of wanting to just try new things and just like what can, I don't know. It's it's more for me more than anything. And like it was my dream and it's to this day still kind of is, is to be a professional soccer player. So, and so why not? I mean, that door is not closed and, but that's the thing. I'm not getting any younger. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Strike by the iron. Yeah, hot. exactly. Exactly. So that's kind of. I mean, that's why this movie has been so, like, I don't know. It's been such a, it's just been there, you know? And I kind of want to, every time, like, I think about it in my head, I'm like, oh, I really want to go back into soccer, this, that. But then I'm like, well, I got to try this movie because. You've been preparing for it. I've been preparing for it. And I don't want to, like, not do something that I've, like, committed to. And so I feel like I have to do this. And then after, I'll kind of know in my head all right, I tried acting, you know, I did a lead role, I produced, like, I know what it's like to be on set for a month in a different country, in a different country or city, whatever, and so it's like, once I have that experience under my belt, I feel like I'll be able to determine whether or not, like, it's worth getting back into it, totally. because I feel like I've done everything else in this, like, industry, in this space that I felt like I've kind of wanted to, and, you know, that's literally, uh, it's props to my team, like, everyone, and I feel like that's just me just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks and a lot of has stuck which is great but then it's kind of got to a point where i'm like i'm kind of spread very thin but i don't like to be held in the box so that being said um the soccer door is definitely not closed sick because yeah. you can also do it on your terms right and you can keep projects like ifis no did i say that right you can say it however you want. Yeah. No, what's the right way to say it? It's tomato, it? tomato. It's, no, I, no, mean, no, no, no. I, I say, like, I say Ephes, but. Ephes? Ephes, yeah. I like that. Yeah. It kind of sounds better. Yeah. Ephes than, like, Ifis. Then Ifis? Yeah. Ifis kind of sounds, like, intense, you know? It's yeah, like, Ifis. Like it's like, ISIS. yeah, that's oh, true. Oh, shit. Yeah, we don't, yeah. No, it's Ephes. Ephes, it's, it's Ephes. It's definitely Ephes. It's definitely Ephes. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, but that's also the thing is that, if I ever got an opportunity or because yeah, if I ever got the opportunity to kind of go back and play soccer and I was offered, you know, like a professional contract, I don't like, I obviously I know people and I know soccer fans as well. Like they are some of the hardest people to get like <laughs> on, on your side. <laughs> yeah. And that being said, like, I just know that there would be a lot of people that had so something to say. And so I know like personally that I would have to like do everything I can to like give them no ammunition to say that stuff. So I would have to work my ass off and like commit to a team because at the end of the day, this isn't for like, if I were to get back into it, it wouldn't be for, no, it's a real deal. It's a real deal. And I know what it's like to be committed to a team. And like, that's the last thing I want is for, you know, so, like, a team wherever in the world like i know how these uh these coaches work like some of the old heads are like you know we just want to win we don't care like if you're not committed to the team you're out like right. we don't i don't care about numbers this that and it's like when i'm playing soccer i don't either you know i want to win just as much as you and so that's the last thing i want people to think is like oh he only got this opportunity because his numbers and like yeah because i know if i were to get back into it i have such a big target on my back but that also is gonna make you work even harder Pressure makes diamonds. Yeah. That's. So, yeah. So. Why do you feel like you're not deserving? I don't know. I feel like. 
it's a bit of like this imposter syndrome, isn't it? It's like, I think it's because working so hard growing up for my trainings for soccer or, you know, being a good student, whatever it was, like my parents were both teachers. So they kind of had to be a good student as well. Dad was a coach. I was a coach as well. So I don't know this, this feeling of like, I'm not deserving, I think comes from the fact that I worked so hard growing up for one thing. And then one day it's not taken away from me, but it kind of is. Cause everything was kind of put on pause. Like I didn't know when it was going to come back. So I was like, well, I'm going to have fun with this other thing. And then this other thing turned out being a huge opportunity. And it's opened so many more doors than what I worked really hard for. And now it's like, I'm getting put into rooms. I'm getting opportunities that I just never thought in a million years that would happen, especially in this way. You know, like I was like, okay, one day, you know, I'm going to be in that room because they're going to know who I am from soccer. Yeah. Whereas now it's like I come into this room and I'm kind of like, uh, it's not for soccer. Like, what is it? And uh, I don't know. I think, yeah, I think that's where it comes from. It's just kind of walking into a room and not really feeling like I've done enough yet. Done the work to get there. Yeah. But the reality is, and and your approach to it is the right approach because you can make the case that there's somebody who lived a parallel life to you. Yeah. That was like the same way you were committed to soccer. Somebody was committed to getting in, you know, mastering a craft. Yeah. That would get them into the room that you're in, whatever it may be, yeah. you know, and that could be anything. Yeah. I, it's a great way to look at it. Cause I also sometimes get in the mindset of like, like I've had people tell me and I've had, I've had a therapist tell me one time she was like, well, don't you think it's the world or you can flip your perspective and be like, it's the world working in your favor in terms of like all of those years that you worked hard, they're yes. just now rewarding you in just a different way. Totally. Than, yeah. You've shown your own version of commitment. Yeah. But I would still like for it to reward me in the other way. I understand. Yeah. That. Because you were thrust into something that you def really didn't plan on. Yeah. But I'm loving it. It's fun. And do you feel like you learn every day? I try to. Yeah. What's been the hardest thing to adapt to? Um, I think the hardest thing, it's a great question. I don't know. What's been the hardest thing for you to adapt to <laughs> with all this? I'm going to um, flip it just to get some inspo. <laughs> you know, I really don't like going out and being watched by people. I think that's very interesting. For okay. Me. And I don't like going on TikTok and seeing videos of me that were filmed by people that I didn't know were being filmed. And I know that happens to you all the time because they'll show up on my feed from time to time. <laughs> yeah. That's a, I th I a hairy concert. Yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I think that's like something that I, um, that's been really hard to get used to. And it's like a new way to live life, you know? And I think, and then sometimes like, you know, just being honest, like when I'm out and about and you don't drink, yeah. but like I'll, you know. You're not going to be in the best state of mind when you're out and about, but you know that like having fun. Yeah. You know, the next day, like it's somewhere somehow, you know, yeah. it just exists somewhere, whether it's if somebody's posted it or not. Somebody's documented it. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's kind of hard. Um, yeah, that is hard. I've watched a lot of friends get, you know, figured out over the years. So I've, I've, I've you know, bless them. I learned from watching. Yeah. yeah I think, uh, I mean, to piggyback off that. Yeah. That's definitely been one that's like, you never quite get used to it when you're just going out for coffee and you, oh, the next, like, an hour later, you, you see in your tags or you see a video blow up because, I don't know, like, I could trip on the side of the street and it would probably blow up <laughs> because it's like, I don't know, it's just one of those things where people, yeah, they're just always watching. And I think that's been something that's been tricky to adapt to. But, I don't know. I can't lie and say that there's part of me that doesn't like the attention. And that's like, that, like totally being fully transparent. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, like there's part of me that's like, yeah, if I didn't have this, then I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. And like, also relevant. Like it keeps you exactly. in the, the zeitgeist. And that being said, like I'm not going to go out and like trip tomorrow and make sure <laughs> someone gets it. Like what well, that, I, I think it's more of like a, because I know people are watching it almost, I don't know. You could do two <laughs> things with it. And I think, I think there are some people that take advantage of that in the wrong ways and will do things that will 
make people talk about him, but not in the right ways. Or it could seem right in their mind. I don't know. I I use it in a way where I don't know. Like I just feel like it fuels me to be a better person at times. I understand that because like you it holds you accountable. Yeah, I know. That's yeah, and that's and the I, best and way to look yeah, at it. Yeah, I think. I think it. You could. I don't know. That you could probably argue like, oh, you should just be a good person, nevertheless. Like it doesn't matter if people are watching or not. And it's like, well, yeah, it's just a little like extra push to be like, people are watching. You know, 100%. be careful. And it's like, okay. And then you eventually kind of adapt and mold into this person that is just a better person because you have that constant pressure. But yeah, I don't know. I think that was. I think yeah, what you said was is pretty tricky to adapt to do you feel the need to share everything everything you do yeah and i think uh i don't know I, i'm kind of just trying to think about everything like sharing wise i'm like i've always i don't know i've always been kind of like a giver like i love giving and i love it's probably like one of my love languages i can't lie and uh but i think just sharing in general in terms of giving stuff to people, but then also like bigger picture sharing on social media, every little thing that you do. Definitely. I think I'm such like, no, I do that a hundred percent. What's the last thing you gave to somebody? Like micro down into like, could be to one person could be on a larger scale. Well, I, I guess you could, I don't know. Like that's a, it, it, like every time like I post is that like sharing no I mean it could be to a friend it could be to one person but you did uh, b- by the way you did post something rather recently that I, I post yeah I post every all the time every day <laughs> like on multiple platforms and I'm like it drives me insane sometimes but it's also like again holds you accountable to like what else would you be doing like where else would you be without this and it's like yeah so you constantly feel that you share things very uniquely too in you, what way? You posted a video like a week or two ago of you on stage with a performer <laughs> and you made it clear that everyone should listen to it with the sound on. Look, I think when... So, some background on that if you haven't seen the video. Um, oh, we'll link to it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was in the Bahamas and I was... Uh, my friend Carter and Drew, was, they did like a joint birthday trip and it was just fun with, my, like, with some friends and... Uh, we went to a burlesque show one night <laughs> and it was, it was just all fun and games. And like everyone in the crowd, like to be fair, the lady that was performing or hosting, whatever, she was great. Like her stage work was amazing. Like it was like, I, we had a great time and like she came for every single one of us was saying stuff. And then she like, there was like a gut feeling as soon as we sat down in those seats, I was like, I feel like I just got like sat down and like, the seat where like she pulls from <laughs> and i was like oh god i just had like a gut feeling that i was gonna like somehow get on that stage in like one way or the other and then next thing you know um uh, like <laughs> like 30 minutes later show's going on and she like is singing a song she like grabs my hand pulls me up and then next thing you know i'm on stage and you know it's funny that you say that with like she could have grabbed any sing like any other person in my friend group because i mean once again like i was i was probably i think i was the only one that was like didn't have a sip of alcohol that night like the only sober (laughs) one you know probably like already i mean i'm outgoing but when it comes to that stuff like you know when you have like ricky thompson there you have like olivia o'brien you have carter like you have all these like fun outgoing people big personalities big personalities that like would have gave the host a run for her money on that stage and like would have gave the people no, what they wanted. She read you. She like p- fully pulled me up and I was just like, oh God, like I w- I'm going to go with it. I'm going to play along, but I'm not going to give anything extra. I'm not going to go up there and like, I don't, I don't know. It, it could have just been anyone else, you know? Um, you know, I like almost stiff up there. I'm like, I'm, you know, so... And then she saw that I was like a little uncomfortable, not for nothing, like because I'm on stage and the, and the video doesn't show the crowd. There was like 250 people like in, watching. in that room just, oh, and I, I was just like, oh God. That. And, um, so I'm just up there and yeah, 
I, I don't remember exactly what she said. She oh. said, I know you're gay. Just go with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said that. And uh, <laughs> that, that's what it was. And yeah, so I think we were dancing for like a minute up there. A minute, right? And so it comes to a point where I'm like trying to like slip away. I'm like, get me off this. <laughs> and she knew that. And she just, she said that. And I didn't think anything of it. But you posted it. Yeah, because I thought it was funny. <laughs> and literally the next day, we, we had like a group chat. And the next day, like... They sent that in because I didn't see the video um, because one of my friends, Sophia, took it and she sent it to me. She was like, I just woke up because all of them, like all of them were drunk yeah. and they like weren't looking at their videos after. And so the next morning it's like they woke up and they and she sent me that. And I was like, oh, that's funny. And so I'm like, I'm just going to post it. I didn't think anything of it, really. I was just like, you know, the conversation. This that's was funny. Start. Yeah. I was like, this is just funny because it's like, I know that's been kind of a, a topic. Um that people seem to kind of bring up with me. And I don't know. I think I thought it was just funny to just kind of like <laughs> throw it out there. And it was just, yeah. You poke it. Yeah. Stoke, yeah. The, stoke the flames. In a sense, I really, like, I was also kind of half asleep when I, like, put it on my story. <laughs> <laughs> and I've said sound on just because <laughs> if you watched it with no, because <laughs> if you watched it with no sound, then it would make no sense at all. So I was just like sound on. And then, Obviously, yeah, what she said. I just I just thought it was funny. I don't know. Like, I just didn't think anything of it, really. So, And we still think nothing of it. Well, after seeing the response, like, <laughs> there was, like, some, some, like, actual, like, big accounts that posted it that got, like, really big attention. I was like, <laughs> I didn't expect this. Like, I expected a few people to be like. But it's not scary. Very. Yeah. Even like, if you know what you are doing, like, you, you, do, you don't fully understand the full... No, you never Reach. really know how people are going to, like, take it. And that goes for, like, anything. You you never really know. Sarcasm doesn't come across very mm -mm. well online. And I've learned that. So I don't really do that often. Unless it's, like, blatant sarcasm and it's, like, you can, like, tell. But, like, some people just take it and run with it and mm -hmm. will not believe anything else. Where does this video fall? Um, This video falls in just, like half asleep like f I, I don't know it was just fun like everyone in the group chat was like that is the funniest video ever like that is hilarious because like they tease me as well for it and it's like all right if it's really that funny like the group chat's loving it maybe the world will and so i was just like i just threw it out there sarcasm or no sarcasm uh we, on whose end i don't like, know i don't even know how one would perceive that exactly like i didn't think there was any like one like people were like is is this a is this a coming out video? And I was like, no, it was just a <laughs> funny video. Like I don't know, it's just some yeah, it was funny. So you're not coming out? I'm I'm not. No, people kind of have a hard time. I don't. I grew up with two sisters. I grew up playing soccer, and I'm I, I've I grew up in a very like female dominated household, and I'm just not afraid to like be in touch with like my feminine side. And I think I thought you should. Yeah, and I think people. I don't know. There's been people that like, like kind of are aggressively when they like are aggressive when they ask. They're like, "Oh no, there's no way he's not like I'm gonna believe it." And so it's like, what's the point of even saying anything? So I'm just like, take it, like believe what you want to believe. I don't know. I'm not gonna like, I'm not gonna be like, guys, I swear, like this is <laughs> like I swear. And so I don't, I don't care. Like at the end of the day, it's literally not your job to justify anything. No. And also, I believe. In any way, like specifying one sexuality or preference is like not even, it's an antiquated thing. It's, yeah. it's a dumb fucking thing. And I also think society puts really harsh stereotypes around what it means to be a man. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think being in touch with one's feminine side is way more of a blessing than a curse. It allows for um, uh, empathy and kindness and compassion and yeah. an understanding to communicate as opposed to being emotionally closed off. Like, yeah. 100%. I think m more fucking men should be feminine. The world would be a much better place. Yeah, I think I think slowly but surely. I think uh, social media is kind of it's kind of encouraged it in terms of like breaking those stereotypes because I don't know. You just see a lot of guys, or you just see a lot of guys doing well that are okay with being feminine. You know, like for example, one of the guys that I love the most, like Harry Styles. Like I love the guy, and he like is okay doing whatever. And I, I think, uh, I don't know. Like, I know he has a sister as well, and I know he has a really good relationship with his mom. And 
it's just like nice to see. It's like refreshing when like you don't always have to be so like, er, man. Like it's just like you know. So, confidence has something to do with it, and I think definitely. being able to break society stereotypes is really hard. Like it takes yeah. strength, but I also think it takes society to grow and evolve, and I don't know, progress a little bit. Always. And by the way, even if one is queer, like. I've, I don't come out. I've never come out. Like, I don't feel the need to come out. I feel the need to live. Right. Right. And like, when's the last time you've asked any straight person to like, to come out? Like yeah. the, the whole thing is just a very, so antiquated yeah. and backwards and fuck. Love is love. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So Ephes, are you wearing them? Uh, at the moment. The fuck? No way. Just say yes. You're not wearing them? Lie. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, no, I'm wearing them right now. Are you sure? <laughs> well, we're, lo- <laughs> we're on product right now, and then that's a good thing. Yeah, that's yeah, amazing. It's a great thing, yeah. <laughs> it's doing well. That's huge. Yeah, it's doing well. I'm really, really proud and excited for the brand Ephes, yeah. What's the name mean? So, all right, okay, I could bore you with all the details of the story, and I will. And uh, <laughs> so it's a... <laughs> the, the story is has origins from like Greek mythology and the story of Ephes is basically a ruler wanted a son. He ended up having a daughter, raised the daughter as a son. And then the daughter fell in love with a girl. And it's just like this whole story of just like fluidity, kind of like what we were just talking about where it's like love is love and who's to determine that. And I think, uh, I don't know at the end of the day, just like, Love conquers all. And I think that's kind of like the the message that we're trying to foster with uh, the community over at Ephes. Well, and it's unisex. It's gender fluid. It flows yeah. for everybody, which I do believe that gender is nothing but a construct constructed by society. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I won't bore you with that. Um, no, feel free. But I think it's, I mean, is that, do you go in with the expectation and the goal to create a brand that works for everybody? Well, yeah, that was like, that was kind of like one of the main pillars that we kind of wanted to establish in this brand was we wanted it to be genderless. We wanted it to be gender neutral, whatever. And we just wanted it to be for everybody. Like no matter size, shape, color, I was just like, I am very, and one of the, like th- that idea stems from the idea that I know my demographic and I would be so naive to think that they were all one, sh- one shape yeah. or one size. And so it's like, I want everyone that follows me or everyone that you don't have to follow me. Just if you're, if you support the brand and you buy products, like you can be whatever you want to be. And I don't know. I just wanted to kind of stress that in the, in kind of the, uh, the branding with that. I think it's really important. I've never heard of an underwear company doing that or being that way. Yeah. The technology was interesting with, uh, with like the, the shaping of that area because (laughs) Yeah, it, it it took some like fittings with the models and being like, how does that feel? Is that like too tight? Too like not? Huh. And then we found like a happy medium, and yeah, I think it works great. Like, um, talking about, I don't know, like I have like friends and stuff that I've already kind of given samples to, and I'm like, what do we think? And you know, and if it's a girl, I'll be like, tell me, like, do you like, it? do you like it? How does it fit? And then if it's a guy, I'll ask the same questions. They're like, oh, it's great. And so it's like it's really cool to hear positive feedback from both sides and i love the product as well so have you tried the thong on yeah i have how's it fit it fits yeah (laughs) i I personally am not a thong guy uh, (laughs) but for this for the sake of trying my product i uh i I did throw it on what an interesting business though to learn the ins and outs of yeah that's really cool yeah it's intriguing like i really wanted to kind of I don't know. When you asked me, one of the first questions on this podcast was like, do you learn stuff every day? And so like, I think when creating this brand, I, like in that process, learning stuff every day. And like I told everyone that I brought on board to help me build this thing out. I was like, I want to be so hands on with this and I want to be like a sponge. You know, it's such an interesting, it really is like such an interesting business to learn about. But when you like open it up and kind of zoom out. It's really just like running a business and it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just so, it's just, a, again, one of those things where three years ago, if you would have told me I was doing this, I'd be like, what? I was like, I was living in a dorm room and now I'm like, <laughs> I own, yeah, I'm the founder of, it's it's pretty cool and it's, it's very exciting because it's like curating 
a whole brand and like aesthetic and with the intent that in a couple of years it'll be able to stand on its own. Yes. And like that is the that is the goal here. And it is rooted in this understanding that you have of the next generation of human beings that, you know, exist today and will exist for uh, literally decades yeah. and decades and decades yeah, yeah, yeah. to come. Yeah. Like, you're amazing. In, yeah, you're in tune with people. Yeah. I try to be. I feel like that's one of the that's one of the like best parts about it i feel like there i don't know there's just so many people like i don't know when the exact moments are but when i'm kind of able to like really take myself out of my shoes and like look at for like look at what i'm doing for what it is it's pretty amazing the amount of people that i can reach and the amount of people that i can like have a positive impact on and that's why I try to be so meticulous and, but also transparent with like what I put out on the internet. Because I, mean, I if if you follow my stuff, if you like watch my YouTube videos, like I'm not very, I don't know. I, I feel like I don't, like I share, I'm very authentic and I like to keep it that way. And I'm very willing to share like the bad days because there are bad days. And there are great days and I want to share those as well. But I, I don't know. I just think that letting people know and like communicating in a way that's like, Hey, even with what I'm doing right now, even the, even though you're watching my vlog and I'm out in Paris and like living this amazing life, like I still come back to my hotel and I'm like, damn, I still have, you know, problems that any human would. So I think just reminding people that is like powerful to me. Does having fame heighten those problems that you face or help you manage them and get better understanding of them? Some of them. I think, I think fame, I hate that word, but I think uh, the relevancy that I've gained over these past couple of years, I think, uh, I don't know. It's, it's very, there are basic human problems that, Fame literally has nothing to do with it. Or, you know, it's like sometimes it may heighten the problem. Sometimes it may like, oh, this helps a little because, you know, I have millions of people that if I did post like, hey, I'm struggling. And, you know, you'd get all this positive affirmation. It's yeah, like financial security. Yeah. A bunch that, of stuff. Yeah. That's a big one. That's a huge one. That's a that's, a that's like the biggest one. blessing. Like coming from a family of two teachers. Like, yeah. That's a huge deal. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was. And that also comes from. I think that also stems or my feeling of not deserving yeah. stems from that because, you know, I have my parents who are teachers and that worked their whole life. And like, I have, I had an amazing childhood. But they worked really fucking hard. They worked hard. Yeah. And my dad was driving me like my practice f for like club soccer growing up was 35, 40 minutes away, like every night. And like, I don't know, in Arizona, it's like, that's it's like, 20, 20 miles, 25 miles away. And that's not like after a full day of teaching like high schoolers and coaching, he's like probably the last thing he wants to do is sit in a car and like drive all, all the way. So the hours that he put in doing that, the hours that my mom did just taking care of us, putting like food on the table, like that's where the feeling of like not deserving this because they did that and I'm doing this and I'm getting more money from it's crazy, but that's why I make sure they are very taken care of on that front. Do you remember the conversation you had with your, your dad about not wanting to continue soccer? I do. I do. Where was it? Um, so it was, I first kind of voiced. Okay. So when I first came out to LA for TikTok, it was when I had... I had people reaching out that lived in LA that were like, bro, like we see you. Cause I went on like a family vacation after I finished out my freshman year online. So from like March, we got sent home. Mid May is when like schooling was done. And so I think like mid June is when my family took like a, we just got in our car. We were like, we got to get out of the house. And so mid June, my family, we took it. We just went in the car and went to like mission beach Sick. and, 
it was like a five hour drive. And so we just got a house like on the beach and just kind of were like, oh, this is nice, like something different, but we're still like in a house. And so we were just chilling. And I don't know, like you could see in my videos that there was like an ocean behind me. And so like there were people comments, like people that I watched like on TikTok, it was kind of cool because there were people reaching out being like, yo, you're in California. Like you're like, what part are you in? And I was just like mission like this, that. And they were like, well, you should come down to LA and like collab with us and like hang out and like check it out. And I was like, oh, weird. I, like, I just like didn't, it was such a new thing to me. It was like so bizarre to even like say like collab and or anything like that. Cause I was like, <laughs> dude, I, I'm going back to school. Like I like I'm training right now like this. And so it was just very new. And then I don't know, like I just kind of. I don't know. Like, I, I really just, like, gave it a go. I told my parents, I was like, hey, so these guys want me to come hang out with them in L.A. for a little, like, is that cool? Like, I'm 19. Like, I'm a big boy. Like, I can take care of myself. And they're like, yeah, sure. Like, we can drop you off on the way back. And, like, they they were cool about it. They asked a ton of questions, to be fair. It didn't go that easily. Yeah. They were like, <laughs> like, there were a lot of questions that were asked. And um, so after a bit, they were like, yeah, sure. And then, like, we can sort your plane ticket, like, on the way back. And I was like, okay. It's like, cool. And then um, had fun, hung out. And then literally, I think I was there for like four days. And that's when I when I was out there, like the first few days were just fun. And I was like, this is amazing. You know, like hanging out with people that like I've seen on my For You page. I was like, it was kind of crazy, like starstruck a couple of times. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, And it was just like <laughs> such a weird experience. And then the last day when I was like leaving, like I found uh, like I just had conversations with them. And I was like, okay, so like. Is this what you guys do all like every day? Like, is this like what it is? Or did you guys just like give me like a good time? And they're like, no, bro, this is it. And like we just kind of hang out, make videos. And I was like, okay, it's pretty crazy. And I was like, and the the money's good as well, right? And they're like, it's insane. Like it's kind of like a gold mine right now. Like, you, if anything, like and I couldn't make any money at the time because of the NCA rules at the time with like D1 athletes. And so that was tricky as well, because I was doing it all just for the fun of it. And then um, I went home and that's when I had that conversation with my parents and I was like, Hey, um, so I had a great time and I chatted to some of the, like the adults and the managers of the house. And I was like, like, you know, keep it real with me. Like, is this worth giving up like a full ride division one scholarship? And they were like, look, if you came out to LA, just like on a whim and was like, I'm just going to collab with people. And you didn't have a spot in this house that you are joining right now. I would say maybe not, but because you are joining this house, you're guaranteed to grow and you're guaranteed to like, and so hearing that I was, it was intriguing. And I was like, okay. And I don't know, nothing else in my life. Like I'd had other opportunities like come about in my life, but also not, I don't know why I just said that. Like also not like growing up, like <laughs> Playing soccer, like, that was the only thing on my mind. And yeah, so, that was like, it. Yeah, and I never really, there was no plan B. It was like, I'm so committed to plan A. Like, this is not not happening. And so. But everyone around you is also committed to plan A. Like, they've. Yeah. They've given. Full support system, yeah. Portions of their life to seeing you achieve it. Yeah, and it was part of my, like. Identity. Yeah, and also, I think I wanted to go pro just as much as my dad wanted me to go pro. Like, I think <laughs> totally. my dad, like. It's my biggest fan and my biggest supporter. And having that, uh, like, when I first brought to him that, like, hey, this, right, like, right now, I don't even know when the next soccer game is going to be. Like, if I stayed, like, we don't even know if we're going back next season because we haven't heard a word because of this COVID stuff. And so yeah. when I kind of told him where my head was at, he was like, I don't know, you could see it, something in him, like, changed. And because it's sad, like, all those years of like watching me play, like he's like, damn. It's so like, like when's the next time he's gonna see me play a soccer game? And he's like, it could have been months ago. And that's just like sad to think. And, uh, but they were so supportive. And I was like, look, I'll put you in contact with the managers that I kind of had the more serious talks with about like the logistics of like coming out to LA, like management, rep representation, and all that. Um, and we'll go from there. And he was just like, look, like, I know you more than anyone. And this is the, it's funny because this is the same thing that my, my college coach said um, when I had that conversation with him, when I told him that, like, 
hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop out and pursue this. When my dad and my coach kind of reacted the same way. They were like, look, as much as I want to be like mad and as much as I want to be like, what are you doing? Like, this is stupid. Like, don't give this up. Like, this is your dream. They both kind of, they knew how passionate I was about soccer and they knew that not just anything could like sway me from this dream. Totally. <laughs> Little pun, sway. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but sway came in and did. No, but uh, that's, but they knew how determined I was for this one goal. And for me to kind of get taken off path, they were like, this has to be a huge opportunity. Like you must know something that we don't or like, we just might not fully understand it. But if this is going to like, if this is making you second guess things about soccer, like what, like who are we to stand in the way? So it was really nice to hear that. It was also like, damn, like maybe I am making a mistake, but then fast forward three years later and here we are. And it's, it seems to be paying off, but then I don't know. I feel like it's another one of those things where it's just not closed and I don't want it to be closed. I, that's it. And yeah. I think at the end of the day, it's just a different path to where you ultimately wanted to go. Right. I mean, but you are still playing soccer on like these huge, these huge plot. Like you're playing with the side men, you're in Europe, like you're, yeah. you're still playing soccer. Yeah. In front so of a huge I'm, audience. Yeah. So I'm very, very fortunate that the career that I'm doing now is kind of kept like, and I've kind of curated that and I've told my team like, hey, no matter what we do. <laughs> Any soccer opportunities we that stay, come up? Yeah, exactly. Can we stay close to the game? Because I'm like, if I start to pan away, like I'm going to hate this. Yeah. And so like I need that sense of like, it kind of grounds me. Like every time that there's like a soccer opportunity because I'm like, I get to go back to what I love, you know? And as much as I love what I'm doing now, like nothing is going to be like that feeling when I'm like on the field. And... I don't know. So every time like an opportunity like that has come about, I'm like, let's go. And so this past one was very special as well because so I, I this is my second year doing like soccer aid for UNICEF. Mm -hmm. So this year was at Old Trafford, which is like one of the most famous stadiums in the world. And they are the home stadium to my favorite team that has been my favorite team since I was like five. Did your dad go? My dad went. Sick. So that was amazing. So my, my, my parents went. And so like I think if that was the last time my dad ever saw me play, pretty good. I think he could, we, we could both, you know, die happy. And That's crazy. Because that was like, I mean, that right there was my dream. Like playing at Old Trafford in front of a sold out stadium was pretty nuts. Is that Manchester United? Manchester United. So that was like. What's it like running onto that field? I mean, running onto that field was nuts, but also the people running onto the field with me <laughs> yeah. was even more nuts. Like yeah. again, one of those imposter syndrome <laughs> feelings of like, what the hell did I do to deserve being on this field with no, but Paul Scholes? You did or, everything. Like your life was aligned to be exactly there at that moment. Like, yeah, you did. Yeah, you if you look it, it at that. Yeah. Dude, I kind of have to look at it that way. You, you must, because yeah. every decision you made really took you to that very moment. And the only reason you were able to have that moment was based on those decisions. And yeah. Even though the path, the paths you've been taking weren't, the initial one the traditional yeah yeah initial or traditional like yeah. it was not even a fucking plan b c d e or f no but you went with it and if did you feel it in your gut that it was the right decision every time when i have like an opportunity or what do you mean even to make the initial decision to move away from soccer and to focus on this whole new chapter and yeah. whole new thing did you know in your gut that it was right i think I felt the exact same way that my dad and my coach reacted when they said this must be too good to be true or this must be like an like this must be something that you cannot pass up because I knew in myself like nothing is going to take me away from soccer like growing up I was like you could throw me a million dollars right now and I'm like I don't care like I want to play soccer because I'm when I, when I make it pro I'm going to make more than that yeah. and it's like that was always like my mindset but then with this it was like I don't know. Something did seem right, obviously, because it swayed me from plan A. Um, but yeah, obviously there are still days today where I'm like, what if, you know? Yeah, but you're still going to get to where you want to be. Yeah. Just in a, a, a yeah. different direction. But I think going back to like the, that deserving feeling, I think uh, it, it was funny because I, I was on another podcast recently and we kind of talked about, I would much rather... Like, I don't know. I, I like, 
as much as it is not a good way to think, like feeling like you don't, you know, as much as it's kind of self-sabotaging to like never feel like you earn this or never feel like, uh, yeah, like you've earned it. I'd much rather have it that way than the latter where it's like you have that entitlement of being like, oh, I deserve to be here. Like oh. this, that. And it's like, there's a confidence about it. Like, yeah, it's like sometimes it's like, oh yeah, I worked my ass off to be here. But I, I like, I don't know. I would, I just don't want it to be the other way where I'm like every room I walk in, I'm like, yeah, like, yeah. Dude, severe, <laughs> severe confidence can be toxic. Very. And actually ruin you. Yeah. Cause it's very, I feel like, as much as it's like not the best to think the way that I do sometimes, it's like it is more humbling yeah, than to be like, you know, I don't care if I, I worked hard. Like I deserve to be here, this, that, like, do, do I don't know. That was just. Yeah. Do you feel like you deserve it when you're like signing exclusive deals with Louis Vuitton and going to Pharrell's first show and they're flying you all around the world for these things? Well, the, no, like, no, I, I don't. Because that's one of those things where, you know, you have like fashion majors or you have people going to school for fashion mm -hmm. that I feel like should be there instead of me where I'm like, I don't know. I like th that's kind of like what it is, but it's one of those things where as soon as I started fashion, like I wasn't going to like, I feel like it kind of goes back to me trying not like trying my hardest to not half ass anything I do. And that's why when I first started like getting involved in fashion and when I first started to kind of like, express my my admiration for it i was like well i admire it but i also want to learn more about it and so like it, i don't know the fashion thing wasn't like a wasn't a fluke thing it wasn't just like out of the blue like i like i really enjoy it and i really like like i like watch videos like i kind of study about it and like this that and like i have fun with it and like i don't just go to these shows anymore at first i was i was going to these shows and i was like woo, like ooh, like ooh la la it's just like <laughs> amazing and then now i go to the shows and i'm like actually like i don't know i watch them in a different way i think i have a different perspective on it now and like i look more into like the little details of like the art in and of it in and of itself just fun is it hard to be pretty and beautiful and remarkable looking uh <laughs> thank you um <laughs> You haven't heard those compliments before. <laughs> Real uh, original. I don't know what to say to that. It is. Uh, I feel like it has it has its perks. Do you feel like you look in the mirror and see what everybody else sees? No. Not always. What do you see? I don't know. I see... I don't know. Like, a, a guy with flaws. And uh, I feel like to a lot of people, or at least, uh, I mean... As some people think, or that some people kind of make clear on like my videos, they're like, oh, this guy's perfect or whatever. And it's like, oh, far from like, I'm not, but it's, it's obviously nice to hear that. But then again, it's kind of that feeling of like, if only they knew, you know, but that's just me being kind of hard on myself. But like, like I said in the beginning, I'm very, I'm a very self-aware guy. I, I try to be like, I really like work towards that. Um, and yeah, like I don't know. Like I have flaws. I have insecurities just like any, any other human. So I think that's the thing that. But I also try to be transparent with those, you know, like with my longer form content, like on YouTube or like, I don't really talk about it on like TikTok or like Instagram. Like every platform of mine has its different like aesthetic and different. They're curated in different ways. Well, it also means that people know you diff like at yeah. varying degrees. Yeah, exactly. Like that's what sometimes like intrigues me is like i wonder how many people follow me on instagram that don't even follow me on tiktok or, or youtube or youtube oh, like by the way like i think every platform is going to be different every platform is different and i like and i know like i don't know i feel like i i do that on purpose in a sense like if you're willing to go to youtube and like look up my name and click on a 15 minute video of mine <laughs> like you should get a bit more of like an insider access of yeah. like who I am as a person, as opposed to if you're scrolling out on TikTok and you just see my video and it's like, yeah, and then you keep scrolling. Like it, you, you, there's no like effort to go out of your way to like see me. Whereas like, I feel like on YouTube, it's a bit more, I definitely get more personal on YouTube and I like it that way. Can you understand why people think you're so beautiful? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, 
I don't know what to say to this. No, I, I don't know. I, I feel like, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. What to I think say society to that. has like weird beauty standards on things. Yeah, I think everyone like everyone's got beauty, and like everyone's got their own sort of beauty. I guess that's, a nice that's answer. What, that's yeah. by the way, that's what I'm pansexual. <laughs> that's what I believe. But I love think it. Yeah, people think that's a load of horseshit. They do. How? How could they? I don't, people are very judgmental. Yeah. But also I think people do believe that there's this thing that like aesthetic is everything when I believe energy and one's personality yeah. and being and essence and existence yeah. is more than just the way you look. And if I love you, I love you whether you're ugly or you're fucking gross or ugly or beautiful, you know? Yeah. Ugly or gross, I love you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do. Uh, <laughs> Aw. <laughs> No, but but a lot of people put so much in in aesthetics. They really do. They really yeah. Do. They do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Why have you chosen to never drink? Um, I think okay. So ultimately, it goes back to plan A of you know I didn't want any distractions. I didn't want anything to get in the way of that. And then I don't know. As I grew up, I kind of in high school, you know, some of my friends started drinking, and then. I, it's still just like it just was never my thing like I, and i mean like i've never tried to sip and i think like now it's i don't know i i've i've had experiences with my friends that have kind of turned me off to the idea but they're kind of embarrassing they make a fool of themselves in a way. yeah and i'm not judgmental it takes a lot it takes a lot for me to judge you and like I think some of my friends have done some questionable things in in a more like serious manner where I'm like I never even want to put one of my friends in that situation that they put me in if I got intoxicated, you know? Mm, interesting. And I and I I don't know. It's just like every every movie you ever see is it's just like written like I don't know. Every movie you ever see it's like, oh, when it, there's alcohol involved. <laughs> Five minutes of fun, maybe a little compilation of like, oh, them having fun out drinking, and then it's, it's like, always ends bad. And I'm like, I know, but I, but then I also know the flip side, and I know people that have a very good relationship with alcohol and use it to celebrate, you know, unlock a different, express their creativity, whatever it may be. But I don't know. I just, it's just not my thing. Is it hard to make friends? Interesting. So I my initially I was like no cuz I'm a I like to think I'm an outgoing guy and I don't know, I love meeting people, making friends. You love like, to share. Yeah, but that's changed over the over the years. Not everything I just said about myself. I think the uh my like desire for it, my desire to like make friends is like I don't know. Is it hard to know that you're keeping genuine people around you? That's the hardest part. It is terrible. By the way, it's hard. When you asked me, like, if I can go back and change the, the when you reverse the question on me, yeah, if I can go back and change my answer, I'd say real friends is the hardest fucking thing in the yeah. world. Yeah, and that's the hardest thing to adjust to is realizing that not everyone is programmed the way you are, oh. and not everyone like, not everyone has the same intent. When 100%. they're talking to you, it's like, if I'm talking to you, I don't know what my intent may be, but not everyone's always aligned on that. And I don't know. I think it's just exhausting sometimes, like going out and, or like, you know, contractually obligated to like go to an event and it's like, oh, great. I just get to have the same conversation for an hour it's the worst. with a few different people. And it's like, I don't know. I'm always, but I'm never going to like go into a conversation with my guard, like fully up and being like, I have enough friends. Like, that's what, like, I'm never going to be like that. But like, there are times where I go into conversations and I'm just like, you just tell right away. You can just tell. And my, I think my, my radar for like ingenuineness has, has definitely improved over the years. And I'm just like, it's a shame, but. Here we are. But dude, it's also a trial and error thing, right? Like you have yeah. to let some people in to figure it out. Of course. Before you can get like this like muscle that like. Yeah. Or like this like, I don't know. The like, patterns and like. Yes. It's a lot with like relationships as well. Like if you, if you avoid the red flags, like they're not going to like never come up again. And so they'll 
probably come back up later in the relationship or whatever. And so it's like, I don't know. I think with like friendships as well, it's just, I have, I'm very fortunate to have found a good hand selected group of people in my life right now in LA that keep me sane and that I'm able to kind of, I don't know, they're good people and, and, and I really enjoy them. And, but then I also have my close, like my closest friends that live that are from Arizona that I grew up playing soccer with that I'm still, you know, like the real with. people, the people that I know why they're friends with me. That is like the biggest thing. Like, because they know you, they know me and they knew me before all this. And now every time I go into a conversation, it's like you get right off the bat, like what they want. Some people are just so like, they have no shame when it comes to like, <laughs> just getting right to the point they're like, like i'm not gonna waste any time like let's work together and it's like okay like you know or there's some kind there's something there's something transactional that they want i'm just like honestly i respect you like not wasting my time and like because it's like i would rather have that than them try to like play me and yeah yeah build a friendship and you realize yeah. it was all for nothing exactly i've been there yeah that was it yeah it is hard dude it's hard it's weird, like, in, at the same breath, I'm very lucky because I've had a lot of friends around me for, like, 13, 14 years. That, yeah. Like, very much at the beginning for all of us. Um, but then it's, like, when you want to acquire new friends, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's a trial and error thing, man. Very trial and error. It's, like, also, nobody hates Noah Beck. Like, you never hear a bad thing about you. Especially in this town. Like, everybody has something to say about that. It's, like, nobody has anything bad to say about Noah Beck at all. That's a oh, famous log look. for manifestation. Yeah. Oh, not, there you go. That's a good log. Yeah, it's a great log. It's a good couch. It's a good energy yeah, on the couch. I love it. Yeah, we found it in a dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> you probably heard that platform squeaking a couple times throughout this interview. Yeah. Don't look under there. Okay. It's, it's made of scissor blocks. <laughs> we made it ourselves. <laughs> but, but like, welcome to Amazon. <laughs> We're only in like a seven trillion dollar facility. I'm a lot farther than I thought. Like in the videos, like I thought we were gonna be closer. No, it's a little no. bit of a distance. Yeah. You like this though. I like it. It's kind of nice. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's good eye contact. Very. That's what I like. And it's not like too, like if we were that close and we had like just met, then it's a little like, it's intense, you know? You feel my breath. Yeah, it's a bit, yeah, exactly. I like it. One of the first times you met, you were starting your podcast that is now discontinued. Yes. It's a good idea. Yeah. What? Wait. I just think it's a good idea. <laughs> Damn. I don't want you out there doing incriminating you didn't like things. It? I think, no, it's a good podcast. I think podcasts lead to... <laughs> To you, to you saying ridiculous, stupid shit. Uh, one hundred percent. And I think you don't need that. No, I think uh, we had, yeah, we ha we had a great time doing the podcast, and I think like, I don't know, it was just one of those things where eventually we just got so busy in our like personal careers where it was just like it's hard to kind of meet up and like. And then Larray was commit. like, it's hard to like talk about shit from life. Then you got to live life to talk about it. Larray's a character. Oh, he's a hoot and a half. I love him. I love him. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Is it Larray or Larry? I still don't know. He goes by either or. And yeah. I can't lie, like, as his friend, I, one day I'll call him L Larry and the other day I'll call him Larray. <laughs> he and like, them both. Yeah, he just answers to them both. Yeah. yeah but you don't need that. We want to be a professional athlete one day. Yeah, I think now, I don't know, I'm a bit more, now more than ever, I'm a lot more selective with where I put my energy. And I think... I just have other endeavors that I just kind of want to pursue more. Efi's a movie. Exactly. It's a lot. Pretty good stuff. I respect that you're still on YouTube. A lot of people have abandoned YouTube and you're like, nope, we're still doing this thing. It's hard. Uh, YouTube is so like, it's crip. Like it, it actually like, I don't know. It, I don't know what the word I was looking for, but it's like, it's, it, yeah, it's a very it's exhausting. It's exhausting. And it's very one of those things where, when I was saying earlier, like, it's a bit more, I don't know, like 100K, like 100K views on YouTube is is so much more meaningful than like <laughs> a million a views on, on TikTok. Because yeah, totally, it's like, yeah. again, one of those things where you kind of have to like, if you're not getting the subscribe post notifications, like you have to go out of your way and look them up unless it like goes on their Explorer or whatever. But I don't know. I think the ability for people nowadays to watch like a 15 minute video mm -hmm. It's like as sad as it sounds, like a lot of people just can't do it no, they and don't. like won't do it. So it's nice to know that like when I see any amount of views on my YouTube, I'm like, eh, people are watching, but yeah. What do your friends from home know about you that you wish everybody else knew? Mm. 
Um, it's a great question. I don't think I've ever been asked that. Do you not reverse this one on me? Like you did? No, the I'm, not, I'm no, I'm really <laughs> trying to think about this. Um. I don't know. I'm really trying to get like, I'm trying to think of like a really good answer here. But I, I think, like I said earlier, I'm very transparent online and I'm very, like if you really follow and like watch my stuff, like you'll know just about everything about me. And so I think like there's not really one thing that I'm hiding or like keeping to myself. Like, and that can be exhausting at times. I, th I think yeah, there's uh, no boundaries. There's no boundaries, and so, yeah. When you when you feel like obligated, or I don't know, when you just feel like you've kind of like programmed your audience that you're gonna share everything at all times, like no matter what, it's like it's hard to draw that line. It's hard to kind of, yeah, like later on in your career, it's kind of hard to be like, I don't know, because you'll have people being like, well, you used to say this, like you used to tell us about your relationships or your, you know other things and so yeah but it's hard to also live when you're sharing everything publicly yeah. no 100 percent. and i think uh yeah it is what do you learn from being in such or what did you learn from being in such like a high profile public relationship i learned that i don't know nothing like every, I felt like I was dating everyone and like everyone was in the relationship. And I feel one of the things that people don't seem to understand, which is probably the easiest thing to understand, but just people just don't want to believe it is that they don't know everything that happens in the relationship. They don't know everything that, and like the internet can skew things in one way. And it's just like, and by the way, that's it for, the truth for friends too. And yeah. like family, like at the end of the day, a relationship between two people is between two people. Right. Everyone's. And even between those two people, it's like, if you're being honest with each other, like there's still probably, like there's still probably things you don't know. And it's like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm very big on everyone has like their own battles that they're dealing with every single day. And you kind of just have to be empathetic towards that. And, I don't know, just extend the hand rather than just like nag, nag, nag. And so it's like, I don't know. I feel with social media, that is like one of the biggest things that I noticed in the relationship is that everyone just had something to say and everyone like had their opinion. And it's like, I don't know. I think people forget that we sometimes see it too. And like mm -hmm. people are just like, I can say this and have no repercussions. And they can because it's like, those are the accounts that probably have no profile pic zero followers and it's like they can say whatever they want but they have just as much power as the guy with a million followers to get the most liked comment you know and so it's kind of the battle of who can say the most bizarre thing that people would like get a kick out of or you know that's kind of where the toxicity of it comes from but you can rewrite those boundaries as you grow yeah you but, can but does that make you afraid of or scared of love no afraid of or excited for jesus christ sorry my brain <laughs> just both <laughs> I literally use the same thing <laughs> um yeah yeah it does I think uh afraid or excited for bit of both probably more afraid to be honest I think uh yeah I don't know Pro probably more afraid do you know what it feels like to be in love I think so yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I think uh um I think my last relationship was my first love and what we did and what we dealt with but also accomplished together was pretty amazing okay. and kind of hard to I don't know. It's kind of hard to top, you know, like I feel like we really good came into this business together. And so now it's like, it, it was very hard after being like, huh, oh, like I no longer have my person anymore. That is like, that would help me after, you know, I had this problem or whatever. Cause the truth of it is like, not everyone understands. Like I can't, there are some things that 
I would share with her and she would fully understand that if I were to tell like even my closest friends from back home, be they'll like, never get, they'll never get because this industry just has like, it's just not, it's such a bubble. And like, we just happen to be in the bubble. And so like the problems that I have sometimes are, they just can't be like, like, dude, what? And so that's tricky at times. Have you gotten over that relationship? <laughs> to find gotten over. The answer is no, probably not. I, uh, I don't know. I think relationships are just hard. And I think uh, breakups are even harder. And yeah, when you know, I don't know, when you're just, when that person was that person and then one day it's just, they're just not there anymore. It's it's very, I don't know, you kind of are like forced to be strangers. It's tough because it's like, yeah. I could go into a rabbit hole and talk about this, but that's for, a therapist, I feel like. No, dude, it's one of my greatest fears is yeah. heartbreak. Yeah, it yeah. It, especially especially when there is nothing but especially when there's nothing but love left in terms of it not ending in a bad way and not ending with any animosity between one another. It was strictly for personal growth, for finding each other independently and like we kind of both needing to fill up our own cup and then eventually someone else falling in love with the overflow and it's like I don't know one day I don't know I, I just feel like yeah it, it, it's tricky at times because I wouldn't say I'm closed off to the idea of love anymore yeah but if they're on your mind it's hard it is it's tough dude I literally I'm in love with somebody and I'm trying to date at the same time. And it's ridiculous. I literally left a date in the middle of it because they needed me for something. Yeah. And I literally ran, physically ran out of a restaurant to go take care of them. Like you can't date in that mindset. No. Do you get what I'm saying? Because yeah, I get what you're saying. My priority is not on the person who's giving me their time and sitting across from me. Yeah. Because they, they're, they're there. They're in my brain. We're, yeah. we're not in any relationship. Right, but like they're there, they're there. So blinded by it, yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah. It blinds you, but it and it distracts you. It distracts you, but I'm doing. I think, but that's also one of the things that people don't understand as well is after the relationship, they still don't know everything. Yeah, and that's the hardest part too. Is like, I don't know. You'll get the comments of like, you know, I don't know because I don't want to give people. <laughs> I, everything but like they just know that they don't know everything is like they have to respect that and i think that's the trickiest part because people are like oh it's been so long and it's like yeah and uh i don't know it's it's one of those things where i'm i don't know i'm just focusing i'm just focusing on myself and i'm very excited with the endeavors that i have coming up and the career moves that i have um and I don't know, it kind of, it just takes you away from that, you know. I know, but it will yeah. always, it, love will always creep up on you. Of course. And you can, like, park it for as much as yeah. humanly possible and, like, mm -hmm. even, like, hook up with random people that, like, whatever. But it just, it will always keep coming back. But yeah. I will say, it is better to have loved and lost than to have never have loved before. Yeah. And either the universe is going to bring you your person back together or somebody else is going to come into your life that's going to redefine what love is for you right and that's the issue i'm facing now is like i thought i was in love with people before and now this person now it's like fuck jokes that i yeah I, whatever the fuck that was wasn't really love because this this is love yeah you kind of i don't know like a thing that i've been getting told a lot lately um and that i've been like reflecting on is like you kind of hold on to the memories don't you and it's a uh, kind of like what I was talking about with uh, everything that we accomplished, you know, like kind of entering this business together and then, you know, you don't really know what life's like without them um, when they're not there. And then you're still in this industry. It's like, oh, well, you know, they were the person you went to for this, that. But I don't know. I just think, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just one of those things where, yeah. You'll never be able to duplicate what you've experienced with this person. It's just no. never going to happen. No, no, no. And yeah, that's why, that's why the memories are kind of like so attached. But then totally. 
and then to write new memories with somebody else seems like a yeah. lot of work and yeah. like both emotional and physical work. Yeah, and you almost feel like you don't have you didn't yet? You don't have that to give at the moment and totally. it's like uh, like I feel bad cuz it's like I'm not really like open to it at the moment and like I'm not giving this person like my full self, but then at the same time it's like I'm still working on myself and I still have like things that I want to accomplish. So, yeah. Like EFIs. Exactly. Buy some EFIs. Yeah. We're going to put a link in the description below so you can grab them whenever they're available. Lovely. I want some. I'll buy some. No, you guys are getting some. But but if I wasn't low on, like, we only have right now, like, in my my house, I have, like, a mini, like, mini shop in my house. Wait, you're- And I only have, like, XX Smalls. (laughs) So I'm like, I don't think that- I can maybe fit in that. An extra extra small? Maybe it's squeeze in. <laughs> okay. You. <laughs> no, I probably need, but I'll, 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 need a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll get your guys' sizes <laughs> after. Sir <laughs> vom- vomiting. I'll get sizes after. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> but I think it's a really cool business to be in, by the way. It's giving me skims energy. Yeah. I, I don't know. There's not, as like, obviously, when I first kind of, yeah, I I think uh, there's there's inspos that we grab from, and I just like really want it to have like its own kind of identity. And like the, the most exciting thing about it is that we started with like undergarments, obviously, and we have three out right now with three different waistbands. And it's like who knows where the the ceiling is with this thing. So oh, yeah. like I I don't know. It, it could eventually move into more apparel. It can move into accessories here and there. So we're still figuring it out, but. There's, it's not categorized as one thing right now. Slow and steady wins this race. Yep. Daniel, what are you thinking? I think we covered a lot here, Zach. Did we? Yeah. Enough? Yeah. Good. Buy some EFs if they're <laughs> available. We're going to put a link in the description below. I really appreciate you, man. Thank you. I appreciate you guys for having me. I really, you're one of the most genuine energies I've ever come in contact with, and I think Thank you're you. nothing but exactly who you are. And uh, you do deserve to be in this room and every room you're in. Thank you. Because that's you. why you're there. And but not your own podcast. That was terrible. Don't do that again. <laughs> no, I just, you know, you don't need that. You yeah, don't need yeah. a bunch of incriminating bullshit on the internet forever right, as you right, try right. to, you know, make your name in soccer and as an underwear mogul. Yeah. It's the plan. So, like, yeah, there's no podcast in that trajectory. No, I think it was just two friends wanting to just, like, talk about stuff and, like, recording it. And um, we can do that in private. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's called the conversation. That, those with are things. That, exactly. Those are things we'll keep uh, sacred. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can still have this the conversation. You can even yeah. do it behind a microphone. Exactly. <laughs> it's a whole thing. Yeah. It's called friendship. <laughs> it's fucking wild. Um. No, really. Efies. Buy a pair. I'm gonna try some. Uh. You know. And you can squeeze into the extra smalls. <laughs> uh, Noah Beck. I really thank you for your time and energy, man. Thank you for having me. Uh, you're yeah. one of uh, one in a trillion, man. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Noah Beck, everybody. Thank you guys for having me.